Hey guys, you ever notice that when you binge on sugar, initially you feel amazing, but within an hour or so you start to feel sleepy, tired, lazy, and you crave sugar again? Usually this is called the sugar crash, but today we're gonna explore what actually happens. I'm gonna get this giant sugary milkshake and measure my blood sugar every 15 minutes afterwards. Here we go. So there's actually a study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition where they took a look at this. They took 20 healthy subjects, fed them each 35 grams of sugar, which is about a can of Coke, and then measured blood sugar every 15 minutes afterwards. They noticed that within 30 minutes, blood sugar reached the peak and then started to drop off until reaching a point below the starting blood sugar. So first things first, I gotta take a blood sugar measurement before starting uh, eating the milkshake. I'm just gonna get a uh, usual blood sugar monitor thing that diabetics use, prick my finger, get some blood out, uh, and check the blood sugar. Of course, you wanna start with using an alcohol swab to clean out. You don't wanna be contaminating yourself with blood products. Always stay safe out there, kids. Uh, here we go. Squeezing out some blood. For all my diabetics out there, this is probably one of the most annoying things to do, so I salute you for your efforts and all your diligence. So initial blood sugar is 87. A fasting blood sugar less than 100 is considered normal. Between 100 and 125 is considered pre-diabetic and above 126 is considered frank diabetes. And speaking of sugar, this monster of a shake has about 80 grams of sugar, 15 grams of protein, about 35 grams of fat, and about 800 total calories. So I'm gonna eat this thing. Um, hopefully I can finish it. I'm gonna try to eat it as quick as possible so that the blood sugar will spike real quick and then we'll see the effects uh, and see if I can have that uh, postprandial hypoglycemia. All right, here we go. Just finished this monster of a shake. It took me six minutes on the dot to destroy this. Uh, a couple of uh, Fruit Loops. What are, what are these? No, not Fruit Loops. Uh, Fruity Pebbles. Every 15 minutes, we're gonna check my blood sugar. So what's happening right now inside my body is my um, intestines are absorbing uh, the sugar uh, through the intestines into my blood. And within about 30 minutes, there should be a peak of blood sugar um, that happens. When this happens, the pancreas senses and is constantly monitoring your blood to see if there's uh, a change in sugar. When there's a high rise of blood sugar, your pancreas pumps out insulin. Insulin is the key for your cells to uptake glucose. So when this happens, all your cells uptake the glucose. What we're trying to see is when the glucose drops down to below my starting point and to see if I get that um, lazy, sluggish state. Right now, I feel super energetic and excited, as you can probably tell. So here's what happened. My blood sugar at start was 87, but jumped to 109 by 15 minutes. At 30 minutes, I reached a peak blood sugar of 155, and I felt super energetic. At this point, levels of serotonin and dopamine were increased in my brain, and there was more activation in a region called the nucleus accumbens, which is involved in reward and reinforcement. My brain was learning to want more of these milkshakes because it felt so good to eat them. Here's when my pancreas started to secrete insulin and it was all downhill from here. At 45 minutes, my blood sugar was at 112 and it bottomed out at 85 by 60 minutes. In fact, the drop is so severe that fat is released into the blood for energy, just as it does during fasting or starvation. So we're 60 minutes in and uh, my blood sugar is 85, which is actually two points lower than when I started this whole thing. Um, I'm feeling a little tired. Um, maybe you can tell in my voice I'm not as jumpy and excited as I was. I kind of want to take a nap. Um, it's craving sweets again, but I uh, feel disgusted and don't feel like eating. Maybe a little nauseous. I don't know if it was because of the car ride or because of the, the shake. And this was the perfect situation to make somebody want to go back and have more sugar. My brain was being wired to want more of this shake and my lower blood sugar was signaling to my body to go eat more. And this is super important because the constant up and down fluctuations of blood sugar could contribute to the overeating of calories at each crash. For example, if somebody had a sugary cereal for breakfast, within an hour they'd be pretty hungry again as their blood sugar peaked and crashed. 
reaching for a sugary snack like a fruit roll-up, which would lead to another spike and crash. And the person would constantly feel hungry even though they ate plenty of calories. This could contribute to the obesity epidemic, particularly in kids who love these sugary treats. So how can this be avoided? The same researchers from the sugar study added more sugar in the form of berries and avoided the sugar dip. Even though the subjects ate more sugar from the berries, something in the berries, either the fiber or another micronutrient, prevented the blood sugar crash. So our results today pretty much matched up with the finished study. Uh, the blood sugar peaked really quickly after eating the really high glycemic food. Uh, it dropped down to below the resting blood sugar rate. Um, the symptoms that we expected to happen did happen, the sleepiness, the laziness, the higher heart rate, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of nausea, uh, just as expected. These effects would probably be amplified in somebody who has diabetes or a different metabolic condition. Uh, so thanks for watching guys, I appreciate you spending this time with me and watching me uh, stuff my face with that uh, shake. Subscribe if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, uh, and see you next time. That's actually really good. I wish there was a better way to eat this cake. <laughs>